Chris the Dating Doc, and it has been a while. Today, June 8th, 2020, we're going to talk about, this is going to be an entire podcast dedicated to bouncing back from a breakup, how to look at fear in the eye and make better decisions, and how hardships can be blessings. I'm also going to take a chance and talk about what's going on today in the world, uh, namely the, you know, the rioting and looting and protesting in the wake of the death of George Floyd. Please do not be turned off by my message. Um, it is actually a message of unity and a reminder that we are human. Stay tuned. All right, folks, fear, 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 okay? Being scared, being hesitant, um, or completely just being averse to something. Fear is something that can cripple us and it can protect us, but we have to learn the difference. So I always love to use examples. If you're gonna jump off a cliff and you've been told and you know factually there's 40 feet of water when you jump off a 10 foot cliff. That's easy. 10 foot cliff, a little bit higher than a, a pool. But guess what? You're not gonna break your leg. You're not gonna break an ankle. You see that there is no rocks. You've done your research, no, no coral formations that are gonna um, cut you up. Um, there's no, um, it's completely open. You know, it, it is a, a, um, a very um, low risk situation. But it's scary, right? So the fear is getting up top on a you know ten foot um, ledge. That's what the, that's where the fear lies. But you know that the consequence would be very minimal. You know that um, you know you jump off this, and the chances that you're going to hit anything are very very low. The only thing you're going to hit is water. But again, it's the fear that cripple cripples you. And again, the consequence is very, very low. But you get in your own head, right? And you're thinking, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? What if, what if, uh, what if I die? You you probably are not consciously thinking that, but you're 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 thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna jump off this cliff and I'm just gonna die. But really, the, the only risk you have is the the um, the risk of not trying and the anxiety attack from being up there 10 feet. And that's where phobias come from. Or you can just, you know what, take the plunge. Do it. You're up there 10 feet. You're tiptoeing. You're at the edge. You're looking down. You're looking down for what? You're looking down and you know for a fact nothing's going to hurt you down there. But you, right now your own brain is getting in the way. Take the leap, okay? Applies the dating. It's all about how we process the information. So that's an example of how fear can cripple us. Now, how can it protect us? Okay, let's take that same example of being up on the ledge. This time you are a hundred feet above. You find out that there's only about 15 feet of water and it's real rocky. You see a couple of like, uh, you know, coral type formations and rocks around, and you have a space of about eight feet that you can jump into, um, or you can risk falling onto, onto these rocks. Now, I don't know about you, but a hundred feet, that alone is pretty scary, but what's going to automatically protect me from stupidity is the fact that I can see rock formations I've been told, I see a sign that says, hey, this, you know, this um, body of water or whatnot is uh, 10 or 15 feet deep. I do quick mathematical calculation and I know, hey, maybe I shouldn't jump in there because I'm going to break an ankle even if I hit that spot that I'm supposed to. How does this apply to dating? Some people are willing to take the leap with the wrong kind of person. Some people understand that they should not do it. They should not jump and date Mr. Underemployed who has a six pack. 
they understand the consequence will be broken heart and feeling like crap. But he has nice abs. And what does that mean? What does that mean for the the ones that want to take the leap? It's still a little bit scary, but it's safe. They don't want to do that. They honestly don't want to do that. Even though there's a little bit of excitement from the 10 foot ledge, but you're fully protected. Some people are idiots. And again, this is celebrated like, oh, the bad boy instead of the cornball or whatever. Um, sometimes the cornball can end up being the bad boy. And then Mr. Bad Boy ends up being the cornball, ends up being the loser. Okay. Some of you still take this, the, the dive when you're supposed to be protecting yourself. And mentally, you end up hitting the rocks. Mentally, you end up breaking your ankle. Get away from that thinking. Some of you women pride yourselves on being smart and independent. Don't do it. Don't do it out of spite for men. Do it because you truly are independent and smart, meaning you make good decisions. But guess what? That means you also make a decision. Don't say, well, because I keep breaking my ankle and hitting these rocks, um, I'm just not going to take the leap at all. That does not make sense, okay? Especially if you profess how independent, strong you are, how independent, strong you are, how independent, strong you are. It's like a meme that um, we put on our social media where if you keep talking about being independent, strong, look, lions, lions don't have to shout their might. They just rule the jungle. You don't have to profess it. So take the leap. But take the right leap. That's all I say. Again, big point of this is that fear exists in our own world. It's all about how we process the information. So be a decision maker. Make that decision to take the leap, but take the right one. Hey, how's it going? If you've ever thought about making your own podcast and you kind of get into that analysis process, you don't know how to start, check out Anchor. I'm telling you right now, Anchor is at the edge of technology. It's the easiest way for you to get your podcast going. I mean, you, all you have to do is you start it up on your phone. You don't need any kind of crazy setup and, 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 and advanced microphones or whatnot. You can do it off your phone or computer. And the cool thing about Anchor is that it automatically distributes it out to the most popular podcast platforms, right? So what I'm talking about is it can get it to you on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money off your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's easy. And um, it's kind of an all-in-one. So check out Anchor. Get your ideas. Get your motivation out there into the public space. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started, okay? Download the app or anchor.fm to get started. All right, choosing signals. What are choosing signals? Well, first off, this goes back to high school level dating or middle school, heck. Um, shoot, we can go way back. Choosing signals is the most basic basic thing when it comes to dating and yet when we get older we either forget it deny it don't want to do it anymore don't pay attention to it and it's like come on choosing signals is what you see at the start of a romantic comedy or any kind of romantic movie whatever situation choosing signals is when you simply make eye contact when you see the girl playing with her hair when you see the little the little flirtatious smile with the eye contact that is all choosing signals Okay, it's when a man buys a lady a drink and says, tells the bartender, hey, get that one on me, send it to the lady on the on the edge of the bar, choosing signals. It, um, you know, when it comes to online dating, it's like saying, wow, you're looking pretty good and I'm glad we matched. That's a very light choosing signal, digital choosing signal, but it's a choosing signal, All right? It's when that coworker you have a crush on, all of a sudden you say, how about we uh, you join me for lunch? We don't talk about anything to do with work. 
bam, that's pretty obvious. Choosing signal. Yet we become idiots. We're supposed to be grown ups. We're supposed to be smarter, be rational,、uh, make better decisions, which I'm, I'm going to talk about when it comes to fear. Yet we forget choosing signals. So let's review this very basic concept of choosing signals. All right, let's take you back. Let's take you back to your first crush when you were a kid.、Uh, the reason normally this person be- became your first crush is because of the, the rush of, of adrenaline and maybe not as much dopamine,、uh, though that, that's part of it. But you know, elevated levels of, of endorphins, cortisol,、uh, the adrenaline.、Um, um, Oxytocin maybe comes later on, and you made eye contact with this person, and, and they smiled back at you, and you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so special. The power of eye contact and a smile, especially when, it is, when it's done in a flirtatious way, which can be done even as a kid and, and, and as a dad to a seven year old, man, it's unfortunate, right? You got to go through that. But,、um, you know, yeah, it's going to happen. Middle school, high school, there's going to be that flirtatious smile and eye contact. And the innocence at that level is that it's not easily given. When we're kids, we're high schoolers, we get very exclusive with that magical feeling because we don't want to we, we share that. We don't want to replicate it. We want it to feel special. We dilute it the second that we start giving everyone the flirtatious, loving eyes and the, the, you know, the butterflies in the stomach. But guess what? It, that crush all started with choosing signals. It all started, you know, almost falling in love, even though you haven't even hit puberty. And you're so in love because you, you know, your crush looked back at you,、uh, choosing signals. And again, I say that, that the magic back then was how exclusive and magical things felt. So if you're going to do choosing signals nowadays,、um, keep in mind that, you know, you have to take advantage of the fact that. Uh, in current times, when we get back after all this pandemic, you need to not only get out and about, but you need to really give some choosing signals. If you're going out with your homegirls or you're going out with your homeboys, do not just hang out at the bar staring at your phone next to your homeboys' homegirls and you're not looking around making eye contact. What are you doing out there? Might as well stay home dressed up, have a little house party. If you're going to go out, Be prepared to provide, to give choosing signals, and to receive, decipher, and acknowledge choosing signals. And that's the foundation. If you work out on your body, if you have done all you have to do for yourself, and you want to get out to meet someone, but you're not giving or receiving choosing signals, what are you doing? I mean, tell me, what are you doing there? That is the foundation. You forget it, you're doomed to fail. So, again, give choosing signals and be on the lookout for them as well. Hardships can truly be blessings if you pay attention. Again, I say this again, repeat myself. Hardships can be a blessing if you pay attention. Now, the thing is, we don't pay attention. We're too busy being hard because of the hardship. So, for example, let's say you got let go from a job and you're all kinds of stressed out because you can't pay the bills, because this is a new norm. Loss of pride, loss of self esteem, you're back at the house, you're wondering what are you gonna do to pay the bills. Friend calls you up, tells you about an opportunity, you interview because you need to pay the bills. And all that stress has now been made up and more. That debt has been paid and a lot more because you're at a job with a boss that listens to you, with co workers that are vibrant, that ask you out for lunch. You have The leverage to be creative and create your own job. 
And if you have to get out because you got to pick up the kid or kids, you're afforded that type of uh, liberty. It's a job that challenges you. It's a job that lets you express. And now what was initially a hardship of you losing your previous job has become a blessing. Within two or three months, you have caught up with whatever money was lost due to losing the previous job and you're off to the races. Improved mental health, which means less drinking, less emotional eating, and you're doing great. That's a good feeling, right? That can apply to dating. That can really apply to dating. Let's say you're in a relationship. You really enjoy this person. A great person. All of a sudden, they tell you that they have to leave because of work. Or they stop talking to you, you know, just out of the blue. Great person. You're wondering what just happened. You feel crushed. You feel unworthy. You feel like, well, this is kind of one of the better situations I've had recently. And it didn't work out. So now what do I do? Where do I go from here? This is where most people fail to learn the lesson or the blessing in this case. They start overeating or they hang out with friends and they're just wanting to hear and justify that it was the other person's fault. And uh, they decide to get lazy on the work. See, that's the difference, right? When I use this previous comparison about getting a new job, you still had to apply for that job. You still had to reach out to your friend, to your contact. You still had to show up. Still had to show up. Still had to prove yourself at work for you to enjoy the job. If you don't perform at your job, it doesn't matter how cool the boss is. If they are a responsible boss or supervisor, they're going to get rid of you. You still have to show up. Same thing with dating. This is where we miss the lesson. We're too busy stuck on the hardship that we don't move past that to look at what the blessings are. And the blessing might be as simple as you're standing in line at a grocery at a grocery store, you're in line checking out, and you are literally getting checked out. But you're too busy in your cloud of the hardship of the recent past where that guy or gal checking you out could have been a nice conversation doesn't mean it has to be the next person you date, but that conversation could have catapulted you into more blessings. You still have to show up, you still have to do the job, if that makes sense, and in the dating world. What's been popularized, popularized, man, what's going on here, is poking fun or making memes about the hardship instead of the blessings that are still out there. You yourself could be the blessing for someone else, for someone else's hardship. So keep that in mind is that hardships can actually be blessings. There's no reason. So what are you going to do now? Are you going to be stuck not doing the job when it comes to dating? There's someone out there for you. And you're also can be that person for someone else out there. Continue to work on yourself. Continue to audit what those issues are. Let's get with it. At the time of recording, it is June 8th. 2020 and uh rest in peace george floyd now he here's my my thoughts on this okay um and, and i try to steer clear from any um social political um view because as well intended as it can be and things can be misinterpreted um people can automatically choose sides and there's this tribal political um political identity or or um you know, just uh, us versus dumb type mentality. But here's my here's my thoughts on this. First off, okay, so let's get some facts out of here. Let's get some facts straight out. If 
you're riding and looting small businesses, which may be owned, which might be minority owned, which may even support your cause, you're in the wrong. If you're part of the media that promotes rioting and looting in the name of police brutality, you are wrong. Okay, again, I, I, I it's hard for anyone to uh, to argue against that. I mean, wh- why loot small businesses that support your community? And if you look at the process of what helps local economy, you're, you're destroying it. You're destroying the underdog. It makes no sense. I'm not even advocating for corporate destruction or looting because, again, some of those same folks that you may might be your friends are employees at those big places like a Target or Walmart or whatever, you know, you choose corporate, corporate West. Um, the other thing is that, you know, this is not an isolated incident. You know, it's not like all of a sudden because of what happened to George Floyd, um, you know, th- this was a boiling point. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. I do believe in George Floyd being a symbol of a, again, a healthy movement where people are angry. People are angry, uh, which goes back to my previous point about why they're looting and rioting, but you don't destroy your own businesses. Um, you know, if, if, if <laughs> focus your energy on what matters, not destroying your own um, community, it just, it, it's, it's, um, it lessens the cause. And there's even debate that there's healthy protesting and then there's rioters and looters that are part of a whole nother group. Again, that's a whole nother subject. Um, but yes, I, you know, I believe in George Floyd as a movement, but you know, um, it wasn't like, Hey, as a person, he, he was the reason that, that all this started. No, it's, it's because of the continued uh, police brutality. It's the fact that these are folks that are supposed to protect and serve, um, you know, kids look up and want to be a, a, a policeman, you know, a policewoman. And now these are the images that they're growing up with. Doesn't matter your color, your creed, or whatever. Um, I don't believe in 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 those that are supposed to protect and serve our community. Um, kneeling on someone's neck that's already handcuffed. To me, that stems from masculine insecurity, ego, um, and possibly yes, deep seated racism. Now. I both, I believe in both black lives and all lives matter. The reason that I say this is because when I do hear all lives matter, it does discredit a little bit of the black lives matter movement. But at the same time, black lives matter sometimes, not all the time, sometimes would not be inclusive and say, unless you're black, we don't want you to understand our movement. You're not gonna understand our movement. I disagree. You need to have allies. If you're going to want someone else to believe in your cause, you have to have the ones that initially do not believe in your cause, do not support your cause to be converted, to understand, to agree, to come to a peace with what you are saying with your movement. If only, if all you have are those that automatically are going to support your movement, then it's really not a movement. You have to Make sure that those that have, you know, caused grievances, those that need to understand your side a lot more, those are the ones you need on on your side. So if you don't, you can profess from assertiveness and aggressiveness, yes, but you do need to be inclusive so people understand where you're coming from. Point blank. There's no way that you're going to garner people to believe in your cause if you say, hey, unless you're black, we don't want to hear from you. That's that's not, you know, that's not healthy. But I also do believe that yes, all lives matter without discrediting what Black Lives Matter movement is about. All lives matter in the fact that all those that were not recorded, that were not filmed, that were not brought to light on social media, they all matter. Because at the end of it, you want results. You want improvement. You don't want to just argue and fight for no reason. You want improvements, just like relationship. So what's that compromise? Police reform 
holding people accountable, especially police departments. And the most important thing, which stems from greed, is the way that police are unionized. You have to look at the police unions because that's really what causes the lack of ethics, the um, you know just this rampant feeling of, of uh, omnipotent power with the police, where even local officials can't control them because of the unions, because they have these deep-seated, knowledgeable lawyers that can protect them, can protect their salaries, can protect them from their own policing and regulation. And part of the ethics and culture of the police is that they'll take care of each other before they want to take care of citizens. Now, I know that's a very strong assumption I'm making, but again, this is what we're seeing. I only bring all of this up because I I do think it's a bipartisan thing. It doesn't matter what party or whatever, you know, if you really agree that the police should be able to do whatever they want to do, then, man, you are something else. But regardless of whatever political party you are, um, we need to regulate the police a little bit. And we need to have ethics classes. We need to teach them how to communicate, nonverbal, verbal communication. And um, if need be, then they need to understand that, yes, they do have power, but more importantly, they have responsibility. And for those that are protesting, again, I understand black lives do matter, but you also have to ensure that the side that you want to listen to you can hear you. Hate against hate equals nothing. No progress comes from hate and hate. And history proves that. So again, I hope you don't mind that. Um, I, I, I did feel that I needed to touch on the subject because it's one of those things that are, um, you know, tearing the country apart. And um, I do take pride in being part of this country. But at the same time, we need to understand that uh, progress needs to be made from this. Okay. Don't confuse it with, oh my gosh, he's a progressive. Progress needs to be made, period. Okay. We are in a very backwards type of thinking where we hate each other based on the color of our skin. Um, Animals should laugh at us if they had reasoning. They should. We're supposed to be the most advanced mammal on earth. And yet we act silly. 